weapons, chemical weapons. The situation in the hospital became chaotic. A lot of people were frightened. They began panicking. People had injuries. They had trouble breathing. But we had patients like that arriving all the time. And the screams, chemical weapons, chemical weapons, were used to create panic. This lasted for about an hour. We were treating the patients and sending them home. We had no fatalities or instances of people suffering from poisonous substances. That's where we are right now. The very latest coming from the Russian side is that they're saying that this was a sloppily staged attempt to show what was a chemical attack when that type of chemical attack didn't take place. Those words exactly used by the Russian uh, delegate to the, the OPCW, the, uh, the Organization for the Prevention of Chemical Weapons, he said it was a sloppily staged chemical attack. Yeah, Peter, thanks for bringing this up to speed as so you are uh, watching in the, uh, what was happening in The Hague. Come back to you later. Let's get some more perspective on it from Peter Ford, now former ambassador to Syria, listening in. Uh, no doubt you watched it like we did a couple of hours ago. A lot of witnesses brought forward. What do you make of uh, the testimony there? To what extent does it support what Russia has been saying all along, that there indeed was no chemical attack? Tell us what you thought about what you saw. Mm. Well, I thought it was uh, very convincing, uh, and, and it backed up uh, completely the Syrian and Russian version of what actually happened. Um, and and uh, the video itself, to, to anyone with an open mind, it's clear that what what's going on. Um, but then, um, I'm afraid that you know you really need to engage your brain to understand what's what's going on. The skeptics tonight are going to be saying all these people are false, all these people are going to be dragged in, they were made to say it, coerced to say it. I suppose, as you say, you've got to use your brain on this. There's something else that came in today. The OPCW wanted Russia not to go ahead with this today. The OPCW wanted... Why would they say that? Why wouldn't they want every bit of information to hand, both what they found on the field there and what Russia had to say from the witnesses it put together? Doctors... Um, chemical specialists, etc. Uh, well, I noticed the OPCW uh, didn't complain about a similar uh, episode. Uh, the, the BBC showed uh, alleged testimony from alleged victims in Idlib um, who were making uh, contrary claims to what we've just heard. The OPCW were silent about that. Uh, it seems to me uh, that they have perhaps been listening a bit too much to Washington, London and Paris and um, one begins to worry a little bit about their impartiality. Mm. I mean, when you've got doctors that purport to be on the ground there, uh, witnesses that purport, they say they were most definitely there on the scene as it happened, caught up in it, they describe how they were caught up in it. What's international reaction going to be to this, or is it going to be ignored, do you think? What's your gut feeling on it tonight? This only happened a couple of hours ago, of course. Yes, well, it, it will be uh, either either ignored, or attempts will be made to downplay it and to undermine it. In fact, these attempts are already underway. Um, but uh, I think when ordinary people see the, uh, the footage, the testimony, uh, they are bound to be impressed. In, in fact, anybody with half a brain could see that these are credible witnesses. But admittedly, half a brain is setting the bar very high for most British parliamentarians and most uh, British political commentators in the media. And surely anyone looking on here with an open mind about what may or may not have happened will question the, uh, the, the, the quickness, if you like, the urgency for the UK for France and the US to go in and make those strikes. Why so quickly? Why couldn't they wait until the results of all these investigations are going on, until more testimony have been heard? It casts more doubt over it, surely. Exactly. What the uh, British media uh, are also failing to point out is that it was Russia and Syria which requested the OPCW mission. They requested it. Britain America and France have still not to this day confirmed that they wanted the mission to, to go ahead. And the fact that they bombed uh, the, the very day before the mission was due to arrive, 
um, I think this looks rather suspicious. Yeah. Well, aside to this, then questions about how long uh, the U.S. is going to stay in Syria. Now, U.S. Secretary of State Mattis said today that the U.S. is going to expand its fight in Syria. That again contradicts Donald Trump's early desire to leave. I mean, he's made various statements about it. As we know, he was going to pull out, then he wasn't, then this happened. Uh, what is the White House latest strategy, do you think? Uh, I don't think the White House has a strategy. Um, they have different tactics from, from day to day. Uh, but to be fair to President Trump, he, he does seem to have a strong inclination to put America first and bring American troops uh, back home and stop wasting trillions of uh, American taxpayers' money. Uh, that's his clear uh, inclination. But of course, the, the deep state in America, the security state, the generals, the political elites uh, are all pulling in the other direction. They want endless war in the Middle East. Yeah. Peter, whether our viewers agree with you or not, it's always very good to have your uh, insight, your experience. Uh, Peter Ford, former UK ambassador to Syria. Thanks for being on RT International Live with us. Right now, that's what the White House is now saying, but it was just two days ago that Nikki Haley, the United States, Ambassador of the United Nations said that new sanctions would be announced against Russia in response to that chemical attack in Syria. She expected that announcement yesterday. It did not happen. Joining us now from Capitol Hill is Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. He's a Republican member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, also the Homeland Security Committee. Senator, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Uh, let's get to some of the substantive issues that you're dealing with right now. Your committee chairman, Bob Corker, described the walk back by the White House as confusion. Larry Kudlow. The president's new chief economic advisor says there was no confusion. He simply says Ambassador Haley just got ahead of herself. What, what was your reaction? Did the White House undercut Ambassador Haley? Well, I think before you talk about sanctions, we ought to talk about, you know, what evidence is there that, the, that Russia was complicit in this attack? In fact, for that matter, I still look at the attack and say, you know, Assad either must be the dumbest dictator on the planet or maybe he didn't do it. I have yet to see evidence that he did do it. The intelligence agencies claim they have that evidence, but think about it. Does it make any sense? He's been winning the war for the last couple of years. The only thing that would galvanize the world to attack Assad directly is a chemical attack. It killed relatively few people compared to what can be killed with traditional bombs, traditional machine guns, traditional tanks. And so you wonder, really, what logic would there be for Assad to be using chemical weapons? So before we get to the Russians, we have to first determine that the Syria was implicated. And then really we ought to determine what the connection is between Russia and Syria. And Syria because and attack. As you know, not just the U.S., but France and the U.K., uh, they participated in the bombing of these chemical sites in Syria. Are you saying, Senator, the president uh, had bad intelligence? I don't know. I haven't seen the intelligence. I, we have a briefing this afternoon where I may see some of this. But the difficulty is these things are not a slam dunk. This was back in 2013, uh, President Obama looked at that chemical attack. And at that point in time, there were his generals saying, hey, it's not a slam dunk. Because you can detect that uh, there were Syrian planes, you can detect that Syrians dropped bombs, but it's sometimes difficult to know whether they bombed an existing depot of weapons, and the rebels have been known to use chemical weapons, or whether the Syrians did it. If the Syrians did it, it gets back to the question, Assad must be the dumbest dictator on the planet to use chemical weapons when he knows from previous evidence it's the only thing that gets the world galvanized to attack him. Or he may have thought he could get away with it, uh, who knows. Uh, your committee chairman, uh, Bob Corker, also is expected to put forth what's called an AUMF, an authorization for the use of military force, new legislation. Uh, first of all, do you know what's in it? Are you likely to support it? Where do you stand on that? It is a good idea to debate whether we should be at war or not. Unfortunately, the use of authorization force, the resolution they're putting forward, actually expands the president's ability to commit war. And so if it were a limitation on the president's power, I'd be for it. This actual resolution will expand the president's authority. For the first time, it will list six or seven groups that we're at war with. You remember after 9-11, we were at war with those who attacked us and who aided or abetted them. But now this is going to first time going to codify six or seven groups, maybe 10 to 15 countries that we can be at war in. But really, it's limitless. If we detect any of the groups having activity in any country, 
the president can go to war there. He just has to submit a notice saying, hey, guys, we're now at war in a new country. And that, to me, is not a limitation. It's actually an expansion of war making, and I think a huge mistake. In an editorial on CNN.com, you said the president should trust his gut when it comes to Syria. Did you give an order to strike Han Shekin, this chemical weapon, last Tuesday? Actually, you no know, one has investigated what happened that day in Khan Sheikh Hon at that moment. Uh, as you know, Khan Sheikh is under the control of uh, Al-Nusra Front, which is the branch of Al-Qaeda. So the only information the world uh, have had till this moment is uh, by, uh, published by Al-Qaeda branch. Uh, no one has any other information. We don't know if the whole pictures uh, or video that we've been seeing are true or fabricated. That's why we asked for uh, investigations to what happened in Khan Sheikh. And this is the second Al-Qaeda source who said that the attack happened at 6, 6.30 in the morning, while the Syrian attack in the same area was at an, uh, around noon, between 11.30 to 12. So it is, they're talking about two different uh, stories or uh, event. So there was no order to uh, make any attack. We don't have any chemical weapons. We gave up our arsenal a few years ago. Even if we had them, we wouldn't use them. And we had never used our uh, chemical uh, arsenal uh, in our history. So what happened this day? As I said, the only source is Al-Qaeda. We cannot uh, take it seriously. But our impression that the West, mainly the United States, is hand in glove with the terrorists. They fabricated the whole story in order to have a pretext for the attack. It wasn't attack because of what happened in Khan Sheikhoun. It's one event, it's a stage one, the play that we saw on the social networking and on TVs, uh, the propaganda, and the stage two is the military uh, attack. That's what we believe is happening because it's only a few, uh, few days two days, 48 hours between uh, the plane and the attacks, and no investigations, uh, no uh, concrete evidence about everything, anything. The only thing were allegations and propaganda and then strike. So wh who, according to you, is responsible about this alleged uh, chemical attack? The allegation itself by Al-Qaeda, a Nusra Front, so we don't have to investigate who they announced it. It's under their control, no one else. Uh, about the attack, as I said, it's not clear whether it happened or not. Because how can you verify a video? You have a lot of fake videos now. And you have the proof that those videos were fake, like the white helmet, for example. They are Al-Qaeda, they are a Nusra Front, who shaved their beard, wore white hats, and appeared as humanitarian uh, heroes, which is not the case. The same people were killing Syrian soldiers, and you have the proof on, on the internet. Uh, and so the same thing for that chemical attack. We don't know whether those dead children were they killed in Khan Sheikhoun, were they dead at all? Uh, uh, who committed the attack if there was attack? What the material? You have no information at all. Nothing at all. No investigator. So you think it's fabrication? Uh, definitely. A hundred percent for us it's fabrication. We don't have arsenal. We're not going to use it. And we have many indications if you don't have proof because no one has concrete evi uh, information or evidences. But you have indications. For example, uh, less than two weeks, around ten days before that attack, uh, the terrorists were advancing in many fronts, including the suburbs of Damascus and Hama, which is not far from Khan uh, Let's suppose we have this arsenal, and let's suppose that we have the will to use it. Why didn't we use it when we were retreating and the terrorists were advancing? Actually, the timing of that attack, or alleged attack, was when the Syrian army was advancing very fast, and actually, the terrorists were collapsing. So why to use it if you have it and if you have the will? Why to use it at that timing not when you are in a difficult situation, logically. This is first. Second, if you want to use it, if you have it, and if you want to use it, again, this is, if we suppose, uh, why to use it against civilians, not to use it against the terrorists that we are fighting? 
Uh, third, uh, in that area, we don't have army, we don't have bottles, uh, we don't have any, 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 let's say, object in Khan Shekhon, and it's not strategic area. Why to attack it? Well, what, what the reason? Military, I'm, I'm talking about military from, from a military point of view. Of course, the foundation for us morally, we wouldn't do it if we have it. We wouldn't have to do it because morally it's not acceptable. We, we, we won't have this, uh, the support of the public. So every indication is against the whole story. So we can say that this play that they stage doesn't hold together. The story is not convincing by any means. With the U.S.